Uh, I'm Dirk Trickle from Citrus County Schools. We've recently installed a numerous amount of BenQs at our district. Right now we're currently up to about 700, but by the end of the year we plan on being at 1,000. Now, when we install these BenQs, of course we're installing them for the users, for the teachers, for the students, so that they can come up there and better their uh, learning experience. But what doesn't always get considered is what happens on the back end. Who's out there to manage these, make sure the users can log in, make sure that there's no issues on the board. And that's what we're going to uh, cover today. So there's three main parts to the uh, BenQ management side for the IT backend. There's the DM DMS system, the AMS system, and then the IAM system. This is for the device management, the account management, and then the user management. So the first one that I'm showing here, this is the device management system. So this is where once you connect a device to your network infrastructure, you can go ahead and start controlling it, uh, set it up, push out your software, uh, anything that you need to do in order to make sure that it's functioning properly for your staff. So as you see, I have all my BenQ boards laid out on the board here. Initially, I can look at, we have 662 BenQs active in our district. Now, to just have a huge list of those to try and find where what is where is going to be a major headache. So what you can do is you can then separate these into groups. So for our district, we have each group separated by the school or location that the BenQ is installed. And that way, if there's a problem at that site, we can uh, go right to it and see what we can find out. So for instance, right here, I have uh, one of our schools, FCE. I can see that this board is currently active. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the board. That brings up a new menu where I can control the aspects of the board. So for us, we have a specific naming convention. We put our location, we put what this is, and then we put our room number where it's stored inside of the building. This is modifiable at the touch of a button. You can go ahead and call it whatever you need to do, make it specific to your naming conventions, rename it, and it saves it right to the board. Now this won't only rename it on this system here, this will push it out to the board itself so that everything coincides. Once it's done renaming it, you can also see we have all these other factors here. Maybe you want to discover the IP address, maybe there's something with your network manager needs to know about it, look at the traffic, anything of that nature. On this next tab here, we can actually control the features of the board themselves. So if this board is on and I know it's in between classes or there's no reason for it to be running, maybe I want to throw it to standby. Maybe it's in standby right now and I know that there's about to be a huge presentation there in about 15 minutes for my administrator, I can pop it back over to on and have everything ready for them. We then also have where if the remote gets locked, stop being able to use the IR feature on the board. We've had teachers who've accidentally have activated that instead of us having to go out to the site in order to manually fix it for them. We can do it right from our uh, location in our district tap it back off, tell the board go, the teacher to go ahead and try out their board and they're ready to go. You can see there's also a key lock, same thing. This will deactivate the keys on the front of the board. Teacher accidentally does this. We re, uh, remotely go ahead and change that setting. At the end of the day, we know this school is empty. There's no reason for this board to be on. I can go ahead and I can shut down the board or I can cause it to restart. Now, as I said, it's the end of the day. I shouldn't have to go and manually shut down all these boards. So right down here at the bottom, I can set a schedule. In our district, we know that the classrooms are cleared out at seven o'clock. So we'll go ahead and we have a schedule set that every day at seven o'clock, if this board is accidentally left on by the teacher in that classroom, it'll manually shut itself down. Conserves power, saves the life of the board, makes it that no one can just walk in and start playing with our equipment without going through those extra steps. Now, not only that, but these boards do occasionally have an update. The software that we install on them occasionally has an update. Uh, we don't wanna to have to go out to each one of these boards and manually stick in a USB drive and try and get this updated. So we go ahead and we use the software management side. Now each one of these pieces of software is uh, Android APK. Most of them do come th from BenQ themselves, but as you can see something like Chrome, we go ahead and provide that to our staff. We can go through our list, Zoom, we manually provide that to the staff. So if we wanted to upload any piece of this software, if it wasn't already installed, we can hit our plus sign. 
it's going to bring up our list of our software, my apps, whatever we've tested out and proven to be working, and we can select it, push it out to our district. Or we can go over to the BenQ apps, this list that they already provide for us, fairly a lot larger list than my apps, of course, but we can push those out to the teachers as well. This way they don't have to try and figure it out on their end, or we can make sure that every board is standardized by what we feel is necessary to operate a classroom efficiently. Now, right here you can see I can check for a device update. When you go to update any tablet or Android device, you know that it takes a little time to run through the firmware that you don't want to disrupt the teacher's uh, teaching habits. So you can actually schedule this update to go at a specific time, or what we do in our district, we set a time when we know the classrooms are empty. As I said, these boards shut off at seven o'clock. One day a week, I go ahead and have the boards turned back on. They turn on for a three hour period. I can manually go in here or have it scheduled for the update to go ahead and push out to every board in our district. It installs, doesn't disrupt the teacher. The teacher comes in the next morning with a brand new setup and is ready to go with all the latest updates. So then, uh, in order to get all this software in this area, we actually have a software management system. Now, I've already opened it up on this other tab here. Oh, not that one. This one. So from this, once again, we're looking at my apps. These are all the apps that we've made available to every board in our district. By placing all these apps on here, I can then choose what I want to do with this app, push it out. Um, it tells me what version it is. Or if, say, for instance, Chrome, we know is always coming out with a new update that we need to get a new one out there onto the boards, we can actually upload that software here. We click our, up, our uh, update button. Now, or what boards I have a choice to go ahead and install it. So every one of these boards I can select, I can do up to 30 boards at it simultaneous and push it, the update out to them. So those are my apps. Here we have BenQs, once again, their app is significantly larger than ours. And then we actually have the device firmware that we can push out. So all that is done from the software management side. Now, if a teacher calls me up, their board's up to date, uh, they tell me, I can't log into this board, or I was logging into it yesterday, everything was working fine, today there's some issue with my credentials. What I can do, I can actually bring up the board, take a look at what's going on on it. Right here I can see users logged in, I can say, excuse me, Miss Johnson, you've never been logged into that board, I'm not sure whose credentials you were using yesterday, and we can get to the root of the problem that way. Now sometimes it just requires us to go out after the fact and get the teacher trained up so they actually know how to use the boards and all of its features. Same thing, they may tell us, hey, I'm using my board, but it keeps telling me that I'm full of, uh, my data's full up. So I can go through this device analytics, and right here, I can see, okay, your storage isn't full yet, there's something else that we need to take a look at your board. All these, maybe this is all full, and I can tell them, okay, there's uh, your recordings, you're storing to the board, this shouldn't be the case, you need to store it to one of your online drives and we'll instruct the teacher on how to do that and give them the training piece that's needed in order to remedy the situation. So the last one I'm going to go ahead and touch base on right here is how do these people actually log into the boards. Initially, we were going in and manually creating every ID for each uh, user in our district. Now this was a daunting task. As you can see, hundreds and hundreds of IDs have to be created. Now with the help of BenQ, we were able to go ahead and connect this back to our Active Directory import all of those different users. We can refresh this on a regular basis whenever new users are added to our system. And now every person that we put into the specific group in our district has access to a board. It doesn't matter whether they're in their classroom, they're in the classroom down the hall that they're helping out with, or they're in the school on the other side of the county um, helping install their boards or work their boards. All right. So those are the main features that we utilize on uh, the BenQ for the teacher side. Last thing I'm going to mention is how we actually fix the uh, accounts for our staff or our uh, techs out in the field. And that's done through our roles. Now, not everyone in our district is a teacher. I'm not a teacher. Many of my crew are not teachers. We need to have a little bit more elevated access in order to get these boards working. So BenQ provides us with several accounts or account uh, roles, or we can create new account roles that we can go ahead and specify, okay, you're able to do this feature of the board, you're able to go ahead and update this on the board. 
All right, and that's how we make it so that it's easier for our staff to provide the proper uh, support that these BenQs need out there for all of our teachers in our district.